Until then, we are still living in a pandemic. And as we continue to navigate life during this pandemic, the question is, do working moms have the most to lose? According to a new survey released by Statistics Canada, employment recovery has been the slowest for mothers with school-aged children. And a piece in CTV News argues that as school boards continue to explore options and scenarios for reopening schools in the fall, it's female caregivers who are going to be facing tough decisions about whether or not to keep their job or stay at home with kids. What do you all think of this? Oh boy, oh boy. This is where I've learned the biggest lesson. I think the world, the, at least North America, is learning the biggest lesson here, that care for children is actually the very center of a well-functioning economy. We cannot believe now that the economy and what happens at home are separate. If we don't take care of our kids, the economy will never be able to get up and running the way we were pre-pandemic. And sadly, as much progress has been made, unfortunately, so much of the lead caregiving in most homes, if there is a heterosexual couple, is still falling on moms. You know what else is still falling on moms? Gender pay gap. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. on average, we're still making 87 cents to the dollar of a man. And don't even throw race in there because there's a race pay gap as well. So you start to add all these layers up and financially it makes more sense for, in some cases, dad to continue working and mom to stay at home, to continue to feed the kids if they have to stay home this September, if uh, there's homeschooling that has to continue. Um, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to put out a radical idea. There is the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit known as CERB. What if that gets extended to moms who can't get back in the workforce if the kids can't go back to school in September? There you go, Mel. You've got a clap from me. <laughs> Listen, I my heart rate is like <laughs> going crazy right now. I wish I had a stethoscope right now for you guys to hear it because I my anxiety level rises every time this conversation comes up. Um, of course, you ladies know my situation. I'm a single mom. I don't have, without getting into too much information, but I don't have any support, financial, or I have full custody of my daughter. So I think I speak on behalf of a lot of the single moms out there where everything falls on you and forget about leaving the workforce. I'm thinking about doubling my workforce because I'm going to have to figure out childcare for my daughter when, when the schools go back, you know, and at this point, thank God, I mean, kids, if you're watching and listening, this is where education comes in because, you know, prior to my broadcasting career, I was a medical lab technician and Hey, I might just pick up some night shifts. <laughs> like I'm literally considering that. Oh, no joke. man. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, of course, am not a parent, but I do know lots of parents. And Sonia, you mentioned you are a single mom of one child. And I think about the people I know who are single moms of multiple children and this, they've had anxiety um, and are very stressed out and have been for weeks because, you know, they're, they're, there's a lot, all this talk about what it's going to look like with schools, like alternating weeks, two weeks on, two weeks off, or two days on, three days off. And um, for some single parents with, you know, one or, or two or three children, their children don't go to the same school. So what if the on off schedule is different per child? So it's, it's not just worrying about what the scenario is going to look like. It's even if I can go to work when it's an off week, what do you do when the off weeks don't land on the same week? So I feel for this. And as a taxpayer, as a Canadian taxpayer, I'm willing to say I will I will put in like this is what my, I think my tax dollar should be for. I would like to put in to your point, Mel, I would like to put in I would like my taxes to go to single moms, to go to moms, to go to parents. I'm willing to do that. But I think collectively as a country, yes. we're going to have to look at that kind of reality. If we want programs like that, that Mel suggested, our country has to think about what kind of personal sacrifices we're all willing to make so that other people can have the same uh, maintenance of lifestyle. And as a Canadian, I'm willing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, huge. I mean, the other way to look at it as well is that we have to think about the way the capitalist structure works right now. And again, I'm not talking about dismantling the whole thing, but I think we do have to shine a light on the fact that big corporations that employ, in many cases, lots and lots of people, a lot of times the top echelons of those corporations look a certain way. They're predominantly male, they're predominantly white, male. And then you go down to the worker bees, and a lot of those you end up with more racialized, more females. And so then when you look to how then family structures work, it's an untenable situation that we've got going on, especially in the light of this pandemic. It was already problematic before when these people at the top echelons make the bulk of the money and then it goes down from there. But it's extra amplified in the situation of a pandemic. And I, I obviously, I have just tons of feelings about this on a personal level because right now, um, you know, we do have two working parents. We're working from home. And um, my family, I think along with many families, is suffering. And my son is an only child and, and all of his normal um, release valves like ours are missing. He's no structure of school, friends are not available. It's just become this very uh, problematic situation and we're starting to see changes. And I, I'll be lying if I didn't say that I haven't thought about quitting and just trying to figure out another way of making uh, making ends meet um, and trying to look at my my bottom lines. And, uh, and, and so I can't even imagine how many other people are having these very real and frank conversations. Something has to give in this fall if we are planning to bring, bring kids back to school. And I think all workplaces should be thinking about how they can accommodate parents better.